Hey, Steven Yoni here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts, doing another High Octane walk around. Now, we all know that the Pontiac GTO launched in 1964, but it wasn't alone in the muscle car marketplace. In fact, by 1968, Plymouth launched a little something called the Roadrunner, which was actually an under $3,000 muscle car. It had most of the recipe parts of a GTO, but was about a thousand bucks less than a GTO. Very, very affordable. Kids in high school could pretty much afford to buy our Plymouth Roadrunner. And the beauty of the Roadrunner was the standard 383. You didn't pay extra for that 383. You actually got that for standard equipment. There was a 426 Hemi, which was an option above the 383. So there was a lot of good stuff baked into the Roadrunner, including 11 inch drum brakes, optional disc brakes up front if you wanted them. And the great thing about the Roadrunner was that it came in three different varieties for 1969. There was the hard top, there was the two door coupe, and a convertible for the first time ever in 1969. This one here is the cheapest of the bunch, which I say is a good thing. This is the two-door post, the two-door sedan, call it what you will. And a crazy part about this one here is the fact that the rear side windows do not roll down. In fact, whereas on a hard top, they roll down into the B pillar, on these, they actually pop out. That's another way to get the price down below $3,000. And that was part of the recipe of the Roadrunner. You got a lot more than you bargained for in a Roadrunner. 335 base horsepower. And again, if you really wanted to go for it, the 440 six pack was possible midway through 69. And of course the 426 Hemi was available from 68, 69, 70, 71. A great engine, 425, very underrated horsepower. But the beauty of the Roadrunner, like so many intermediate sized muscle cars, is how big the trunk is. And before we open that, let's have a peek right here. The Warner Brothers Seven Arts full color Beep Beep. This is of course the Roadrunner character, which arrived I think in 1962 or three. And of course, for 1969, went full color. And I understand that Warner Brothers Seven Arts got about a $10,000 licensing fee for the use of that Roadrunner. Beep, beep. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But getting back into this trunk, let's have a look inside. And look how big that trunk is. I dare say it's commodious. That's the word of the day. And the beauty here is that this one's nicely rendered, completely original looking. It does have 15 inch wheels, which are one inch larger than stock, but hey, I won't complain if you won't. The red line radial tires are a more modern thing, but they kind of hide in plain sight. And the beauty here again is that you could totally go shopping for a complete week's worth of uh, recipes and groceries and pack them right into this trunk right here and uh, get by for the entire week with one trip to the grocery store. Now something found on all Roadrunners is dual exhaust. These had 335 horsepower in base trim and plenty of power to sort of, you know, spank a GTO unless that GTO is a Ram air car. But the most important thing about the rotor is what's under the hood on the other end of the body. Let's take a look. Before we open this really cool hood, let's point out the fact that this one does have the optional N96 functional air grabber, also known as the Coyote Duster. Uh, we'll notice here that these metal fins right here absolutely function, and there's a little switch under the dash. You pull it out, and there's doors that open up that allow cool air to go into the engine bay. And again, this hood right here for 1969, for the first time ever, became functional to give a little bit of extra horsepower to the 383 or the Hemi under the hood. But first, let's open this hood and see what we have. And as the hood emblems indicate, it is the 383, nothing wrong with that. But the beauty here is that we look on the fender tag N96, that has the factory code for the functional cold air system right there. There's no put on, this is the real deal. And again, there's a cable that operates right here. You pull a little tab onto the dashboard and it opens and closes the little doors, which allow the engine to get a nice cool gulp of air. Now getting back to this engine, this is the basic 335 horsepower, 383, four barrel carburetor, high rise exhaust manifolds, better stuff than you'd find on any 320 horsepower 383. This is basically about as good as it got for a 383. And again, with the cold air induction, this awesome metal, air cleaner housing right here was par for the course. Not a lot of extra money, but it gave these things major street credibility. And speaking of street credibility, this right here is the first year voice of the Roadrunner. This little purple horn right here, if I ting it, you can kind of hear a little bit of a resonance. 
that weird sound right there? And that's because the horn itself floats in a bezel right there, which is actually meant to make some uh, resonance. In fact, let me honk that horn a couple times. And if you ever watch the Roadrunner cartoon, you will recognize this sound right here. There you go. There's the voice of the Roadrunner right there. But again, the standard GTX or Belvedere or Savoy would not have the purple voice of the Roadrunner horn specifically found on the Roadrunner and nothing else. Let's go inside and find out what we have for transmission. To help keep the base price of the Roadrunner just over $3,000, which again was affordable to most any person with a high school job, no kidding, uh, Plymouth skimped on certain things. The front bench seat was standard. You did not, uh, didn't come standard with buckets. You had to pay a little extra for that. But if you wanted buckets, you'd get them. With that said, this bench is actually lighter than a pair of buckets, no kidding. But standard fare on all Roadrunners with a four-speed manual transmission right here. This is the Chrysler four-speed, the A833, almost bulletproof. And here's one, two, three, four on the pattern ball right there. And here again is that cold air knob right here. It says carb air, that thing right there. You pull that out and you get a nice dose of cool air inside the engine. Now, something kind of interesting on this one here, we'll see that in the center of the horn button is the beep beep little presentation right there. That was standard fare. What we don't see on this one here is the standard tachometer. You actually had to pay a little bit extra for the factory tack, but in this case here, somebody added a Sun Pro tack, which works just about as well. Now again, a four-speed was standard. For 1970, well, Plymouth got a little bit cheap, and a three-speed manual, the A230, replaced the A833, but hey, I won't tell anybody if you won't. One of the cool things about the Roadrunner is they came standard with 11 by 3-inch front drum brakes and 11 by 2-inch rear drum brakes. You could pay a little bit extra to get disc brakes up front, again, the drums in the back. But again, either way, these brakes were much larger than what you'd find in a Chevelle SS396 or a Pontiac GTO. That's one of the things that Chrysler always did. They give you plenty of brakes to slow the car down after a long, fast trot. Now, to learn more about this car, you can check it out on the High Octane Classics website.